Let the bass kick. What up? What up? Peek-a-boo. What up? What up, everybody? It is Monday, 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 October 5th, 2020. And I am Will, and that is Jay. Hi. Hi, guys. What up, buddy? Yeah. What's up, man? Hi, Will. God, it feels, it's been a while. Dude. It's been a minute. It's weird when we take a week off. Yeah, and it's even weirder when you come back and... Marcus has got things going and Hoy's saving babies. Yeah, and we're kicking it old school. Uh, for those of you that have followed the Music City Disc Golf pod, uh, <laughs> blah, 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 Music City Disc Golf podcast uh, for the last couple of years, you will know that Jay and I used to do this by ourselves, and we would get remote guests on from time to time, mm-hmm. do some fun stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been a while since it's just been me and you. This is yeah, yeah. a long time. We've kind of. Uh, accumulated a crew of like-minded podcast aficionados yeah and now it's just me and you and we have no guest there is no it really guest is tonight. old school yeah super old school um sure to be entertaining though because we're going to talk about the music city open gosh what else just, would we talk about I, t- I don't know that's what's on my mind it's been on my mind for what three months I, I mean, it's always on my mind. Heavily on my mind, I guess I should say, for three months, and then been on my mind in the back burner or on my mind somewhere in that realm of mystery up there. <laughs> uh, been on, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a constantly. If you can't tell on the broadcast, memory. you guys, constant memory. There uh, you go. We both of us may have blown a fuse over the course of the Music City Open. I'm still recovering. Yeah, my brain is just starting to work normally again. I think. Just barely. Um, yeah, it was kind of a blur. I mean, 614 players from all over the country. Is that what the final count was? 614. Yep, 614 players. And some of the best in the world played at Cedar Hill. Yes, they did. And uh, you guys, I know there's been lots of questions, lots of commentary. Um, you know, uh, media coverage is forthcoming. There is already a little bit out. You guys can go over to the Harper Thompson Disc Golf Channel on YouTube and see the MJ 18 round two lead card at two rivers. And also the round three MP 40 lead card at two rivers on the Show Harper disc live channel. Love yep. Because uh, Harper and David um, Harper, Harper Thompson disc golf, they approached us about it and threw us the idea. And I kind of thought of the idea, let's keep it a secret, especially with the, the MJs, the juniors, but I handed it to, to Harper and David for coming up with that because I thought that was a stellar idea and a yeah. wonderful thing to do. I think the more cameras, the better. And that's what I told Harper. And, you know, I'm always lobbying to get coverage for stuff like juniors and uh, pro masters and stuff like that. And especially, you know, we've had several people that play on the pro masters kind of circuit in that division and they play a lot of the big events, you know masters worlds and all that stuff and feel like they're kind of getting the short end of the stick Mm -hmm. with coverage and fanfare and attention and um and not even that just like investment just like extra like effort like how about just having some attention to to them it's like after you leave mpo it's like where you know yeah and they still have a story to tell sure for sure i mean and they still have fans that follow them that want to see them and we said this i think Maybe on the one of the episodes with J. Ray, but I said, you know, I think if you are taking away the spotlight from those players, you're depriving the next generation of disc golfers of a va- of a lot of valuable lessons that those guys have to teach. But uh, anyway, long no. story short, no. I was just going to say that you know I'm, I like al- the rant. I'm I'm always lobbying for people to uh, do more coverage of MP40. And when we had the NT secured and we were still planning for the NT finale, it was initially my plan to have the PDGA media agreement where they have, you know, MPO1, MPO2, FPO1, and all that's arranged. You had Jomez, Central Coast, Gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And then we could bring in Howard Disc Golf to maybe do FPO2. 
sure. we could bring in an Ace Run Pro to do MP40. You know what I mean? And anytime you kind of get into those conversations, it's always difficult because they the media providers always want to say, well, the interest isn't there. There's no interest. So it's hard to talk people into uh, providing coverage for stuff like juniors and MP40. And so, uh, you know, obviously Harper is not, you know, a nationwide established media provider in disc golf, but he makes quality videos and his coverage is good. His commentary is solid. And, you know, you get to see another story, another side of uh, our biggest event of the year. And we get to see another side of Harper himself too, because he played the event FPO as well. Not FPO. Did he not play? Not I thought an, he pulled not an, FP, not an FPO. I mean, MPO. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Harper. I don't know why I said FPO. <laughs> no, he Blah. played. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, throwback to 2018 because he in, he was pulling double duty, coming off his rounds, strapping up with cameras for Central Coast and at doing Ravenwood. catch cam at Ravenwood. And he was coming off his rounds, strapping up, doing catch cam for uh, Central Coast, and he still won MA1, Advanced Man. And that was 2018. Gosh, so yeah, dude. he's still he's still at it. He he's coming off his rounds and going straight to two rivers for round two and round three of the Music City Open and catching the action out there for lead card. So uh yeah, shout out to Harper. We were actually supposed to have him on the podcast tonight and um Circumstances beyond his control. Yeah, his little brother's sick, and so we wish Harper and his family all the best, and we'll do that another time. Rain check. But um yeah, dude, I, I'm always impressed with Harper and and the fact that he targeted those two divisions, those two cards well, for coverage. I was like, yes, dude, thank you, well, thank I, you. Well, what's funny is when you were we were talking about because I've heard that same argument with like, there's no interest in the coverage. Why would we do the coverage? Well, I'm curious to wor- to know where the um, statistics come from that or the analytics on that because. How do we know? We there's not a lot of people providing that, minus like you know Junior Worlds and stuff like that. You don't see a lot of the coverage. So well, it's mainly based on on views on on you, streaming, you know, YouTube and, and social there? media. Well, there's not many, and that's because it's this catch twenty two sure. where the media provider is saying, well, we're not going to see any kind of return on that kind of investment because there's nobody's interested. And and to me, and th- and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but my feeling is. Well, there's not going to be interest there until you create the interest, until you present it in a way that's similar to what it is. Like, you've got the Pro Masters division. Like, a lot of these guys are former world champions. So, why would you not prevent, pr- present that coverage with some sort of fanfare and, you know, glitz and glam? Like, you look at the, P- the PGA, you know, the Masters. Sure. Like, that's... The grandest event. Sure. I mean, you have all age ranges playing that event. And then you have the Masters Tour on top yeah. of it and a women's tour. And, and the senior tour. And then you the have... The senior tour, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So... Well, well the, the biggest thing is is there's nothing for fan content. Like, look, look at Climo. I love Climo. You love Climo because he's played for years and when we were up and coming. But you don't get to see him. I mean, he doesn't play Michael Jordan of disc golf. Yeah, him or Barry or like uh, Patrick Brown, who we had, or Barry's like uh, Scotty Pippen of disc golf. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, I, I, McCray. Yeah, those guys they they don't get any coverage Converse. anymore. And the thing is, is I, I'm with you on this whole argument is that you have to provide a a a quality coverage to get the interest there. I mean, look how much the interest has peaked with the quality coverage of MPO and FPO. Like it's astronomical. So if you do the same for those guys, and what I mentioned to you about the juniors is like, dude, if you do the coverage like a premium style and you go at it like a, a little league World Series, dude, I love watching the little league World Series. And yeah, I for don't sure. Don't care anything about baseball. Mm-hmm. But like, if you present it that way, people love that stuff. Yeah. So it's all about like you said, putting it out there for people to get an interest. Well, and and then too, I mean, even, and, and that's not to be a knock on anybody that no, has ever no. been approached about uh, investing in it's hard to commit. pro masters events in some capacity. It's because it's hard to have an individual conversation with one entity, like uh, soliciting some sort of sponsorship or favor or investment in this endeavor. Like you're asking this one person and they're like, well, yeah, okay. Let's say me and my partner show up with our cameras 
and we're there and we're filming and there's nothing. There's no feather flags. There's no tents. There's no uh, PDGA. There's no title sponsor presence. There's no, uh, you know, there's no decorations. It just, you know, seems like you're at a league or something, sure. you know, and that's what the co- the commentary was from a lot of the guys playing in Masters Worlds, <coughs> Worlds, <laughs> recently, uh, yeah, was that going to a World Championship felt like a C tier, and and that's unfortunate because those guys deserve some sort of recognition and nod from the rest of us. I mean, like they've earned it, they, they, dude. Yeah, that's right, the top it. of our game. I mean, like that's the people that have been here. And one and it's kind of understand like, the game the best. Let's forget the Trailblazers. That's like yeah, kind of what's going on? Yeah, and so, but I understand why it's like if you know, if I were to go to one media provider or go to one sponsor and say, "Hey, can we really try to blow this event out for this division?" and it's like, well, everybody's kind of hesitant and reluctant, and it's like, you know, it's frustrating, but I understand. But it's like we all that like, what it takes, and I'm this is where I fall, like. There's a disconnect in communication. I said I said the L word <laughs> that we don't say anymore. We're working. I've we're, got a rubber we're band. Trying to on better my wrist. ourselves. Yeah, try to get rid of the like word. You know what's killing me though right now? Continue your thought, but this thing. Go. This thing? Yeah. We can get rid of that thing. Boom. Go. Cool. Um Yeah, so it takes a commitment where I've always been somebody that's like, well, let's just all agree that this is something that should happen and let's commit ourselves to it. It's hard to convince a group of people to invest their resources in something that when it comes down to dollars and cents is speculative. It's not a sure thing. You know what I mean? So I, I understand that the reluctance there, but well, can I, can yeah, I, go for it, dude. I, not to argue you because I agree. I want to hear your thoughts to agree with you, but I feel like if you do the same things as you're doing with the FPO and the MPO, you isolate their events where there's nothing else going on with next day coverage, and you pay the money to the guys who, hey, they may not necessarily think it's worth their time, but if you're giving them the money, they're going to show up. Yeah, you know, it's still a job to them, and so if they, you know, they're there, and you give them the same platform and there's you release the next day footage with no other big tournaments going on with media and stuff like that people love watching disc golf and it doesn't matter i think i mean not to say that they're not going to tune in to see bigger names because they will yeah but it's still disc golf and the people who love disc golf that's the one thing is true they love disc golf and love watching it regardless so it's like give them the platform like try like at least it would be nice and i wish i could do it but you know, it'd be nice to see somebody step up and for a season, you know, and give it a full run, full like we do with the you know MPOs and the FPOs. Give it a shot. Yeah. And and if you do it right with no you know no other events, next day coverage, I think you'll draw that audience and you'll see that investment or you know that return. I think eventually that's what you would get. Yeah, absolutely. But, and that's all it requires is willingness on behalf of several people to. Commit to it. Light bulb. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, I'm down to facilitate and host. I'll, I'll you know, if we can, you know, but it's also. got to get on that investment, guy. We got to meet some investors. It's also, <laughs> it's also a slow burn movement kind of grassroots thing, like with uh, investing in women's disc golf, which, um, perfect time to mention, there is the Respect Her Game social media campaign kicking off tomorrow, I've October not, 6th. I've not heard of it. Tell me. So uh, you guys can go to uh, www.respecthergame.org and you can find out all the details about this campaign. But starting tomorrow through October 13th, um, women are encouraged to um, post videos and and pictures of of them playing disc golf with certain hashtags and uh, people, allies like ourselves, who, uh, you know, we've had a lot of women on the podcast recently and and we always try to... Uh, emphasize the the women's side of things, especially when even just running events, you know. Right. And um, so I've uh, changed. There's also a cover photo and a profile photo that you can save and, and use on your social media platforms. Okay. Um, I put the cover photo up on my profile today. Who's behind this uh, movement? Uh, Sean and Sarah have been a uh, driving force with it. Also, uh, uh, discgolfforwomen.com, Sarah Hokum, and... Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the 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 
names that you would expect sure in the professional women's disc golf world. i heard some uh some tinkling in the ears about some things like that from sarah and them and i, yeah. I saw a post and so i was curious if that was the same one yeah and uh the, the disc golf pro, t- pro tour is is cooperating and collaborating with them so it's it's going to be a, a worldwide thing and it's basically the the overall goal is to create more of a positive and um encouraging space for women to exist within disc golf and who can argue with that if I, you have a problem with that then i guess come talk to me in the parking lot yeah and well we can settle this old school yep well, there there was a day we take a guy like you out yeah. back and whip him with a garden hose. Yeah. Then now you got your damn unions. You know, I'm not a union guy. Now hit uh, us up if you know where that came from. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a hundred of them. Oh, we know where that's. We at. just need to embrace the movie quotes. I mean, that's going to have to become a theme. It's a lifestyle I, I for know. Me. Yeah, I know. You, you're half the the words you say to me are quotes from movies. Yeah. It, it, you got to check out my buddy C.J. Frazier. Everybody, check out my buddy C.J. Frazier. Um, if you, you know the Blackstone uh, Grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is sponsored by them, and he has a uh, him and his buddy Nate Lippy, Nathan Lippy. Yeah. They are cooks and uh, filmographers, and so they have like CJ has a show called CJ's First Cooking Show. Oh, bro, you were showing me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So uh, everybody, go check that out. CJ's First Cooking Show on YouTube. It's under Blackstone products um you know you can find it under their channel as well i'll vouch for will on this because it's can't, good stuff i can't tell you how many times he so shows me a youtube video and he literally watch this man watch this and Dude, i'm like oh it's totally go, like one. delicious confections and, and I food products it. and it combinations and it was delicious and they quote movies constantly but then one one of them quotes a movie they actually show the clip from the movie where that quote is that's a, it's it's beautiful. It's it, like it would be so emotionally satisfying for you. I'm gonna get after watching it. I only watched that one clip on your phone, so you got to go to CJ's it. first cooking show and watch it. It's another rabbit watch every hole, episode. man. Another two hours of my life. But they're really that. short episodes. You'll love it. It's like 20 minute episodes. I, I love the first one. That's what, which is why I chose and they show to you how to make such it. amazing stuff. I know, dude. Food. That's all you gotta say to yeah, me. It's great as long as it doesn't have. So tomatoes. yeah, uh, back to women's disc golf. Um, Crazy segue. We're going to go loop de loop. Woo! Old school. <laughs> so, yes, respect her game starts. Uh, the campaign starts tomorrow, uh, October 6th, and runs through October 13th. So, there's uh, hashtags to use, social media images, all sorts of stuff. Are they Good. fundraising at all? I don't think it's about fundraising. Okay, I think just, it's just about just yeah, lighting social media up with uh, positivity and support for the women's side of our sport. Well, dude, we got social media covered. Yep. Then we're Constantly. gonna we're gonna blow it out. I'm gonna put the cover photo up on the podcast page too. Um, yeah, we'll knock it out. Speaking of which, um, we had a really awesome conversation uh, two weeks ago now, mm-hmm. two Mondays ago, with Callie McMorrin, a uh, friend of the show, friend of ours, and Erica Weir. Mm-hmm. who is touring with Callie and was uh, the amateur world champion and uh, p- played really, really well at the Music City Open. Uh, go back and listen to that podcast. It's available in audio on all major platforms. Uh, I- I'm also just finalizing the final video cut, so we'll have that up on YouTube, probably right in tandem with this episode. But we're here to talk about all kinds of other stuff. Well, thank you also for allowing us that a little bit of delay and release too, because the MCO is a lot to take in. Yeah, there was no way around it. I mean, we uh, skipped a, a week. We all podcast. kind of blow a fuse a little bit over that that couple week period. I think. Yeah, and and guys, the MCO, hands down, for the, all the fans, everybody, spectators, non spectators, technically competitors, everybody. What a Simply the best one I've ever been to. Minus like not having the side games or not having the side events, not having the pay- players party, fly mart, you know, dude, hands down, like one of the best ones. Yeah. I was super stoked. I think my first comment on it was uh, biggest it's ever been, smoothest it's ever run. Yeah. Well, that was a very good comment because there were some other ones that were – you know, constructive in some ways. Well, before we get into that, I do want to say a super special shout out and thank you to first our title sponsor, Dynamic Discs, because they have been ride or die for this event through the entire process. 
even when COVID threw a wrench in the gears. Uh, yeah. Their their commitment to the Music City Open and to Music City Disc Golf has been unwavering, and uh, we are incredibly grateful for their support. It would have been impossible to pull off a 614 player event without their support, for sure. I can't, can't agree more with you, brother. I mean, they make it possible for us to do what we do here in Nashville. They yep. are they're kind of like a brother, man. And they sent up. the giant RV all the way from Emporia. Carl, with, with uh, yeah, Gabe, my team manager, and uh, Carl Atwell, who manages the RV. So he was doing the vending, and uh, Danny Lindahl from the media team at Dynamic Disc, and he was out filming the entire week. That fella, he's real swell. I yeah, like, I like those fellas. He's the bee's knees. Yes, he is. I'm quite fond of Danny. We had a real shout gas. out to Danny. A real gas while they were in town. Yeah, we had fun with them. We got to go out to dinner with them. Uh, got some barbecue, and that was fun. That was, I gotta say, I've never eaten barbecue like fast food style. Like you walk up, order it, and then like that was that was so different to me. It was I great. Never, never, nor there wasn't even a beer to wash it down. That was kind of odd, but sweet tea was good. Well, you know, yeah, you know, sweet tea, lemonade. Just I had a, lemonade. Just a different experience for barbecue I had an, for me. Oh, dude, my refill was an Arnold Palmer. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I had the. I know about some Arnold Palmer yeah, action. No, yeah. it was pretty sweet. You're gonna enjoy the. You know, upcoming event this weekend. And we want to mention it, but I, yeah, I don't want any party party crashers. But there'll be some Arnold Palmers there, I'm sure. Yeah, homemade from <laughs> Ashley too. She's doing the lemonade. Um, but yes, outside of the title sponsor, I would also like to thank the Nashville Disc Golf Store, Sean Groton, and and uh, everybody there for uh, being one of our amateur payout providers, giving us some more options outside of the trilogy lineup. Um, I would also like to thank all of our staff. Um, we had a huge staff this year, and it was the dream team. Could Man. not have been better. I am still having people coming to me with text messages, emails, all this uh, diff- different things, saying how smooth everything ran, that it was the smoothest event they've ever been to, and their course staff everywhere they went was on top of things. And just, uh, yeah. Will, I know it's got to be a relief to you because – I felt a lot of a lot more this year so than in years previous that stress that you feel of that delegation and not knowing yeah. and making sure everything goes like it's supposed to. So I I was so relieved when it when it did run so smooth and so I can't even imagine you know that relief off your shoulders and staff and and volunteers like you said second to none. I well, never, we never had that before. Another testament to our staff. I I was never worried. Like for the first time ever, I was not worried at any what? point. What? You? Yeah, I, mean, I was worried Worry about I was worried will? about things. I was worried about things, but I was not worried about what was going on at the other courses while we were at. Worried about Hill. where Jay was when he was supposed to be here at six. That was one <laughs> of the things. That was one of the things. Um, but as far as what was going on at the other courses or what wasn't going on at the other courses, I had zero concerns, and I'm going to tell you why because we had people such as the following. So. Um, Obviously, you and I were parked at Cedar Hill for the majority of the time. We Let's came and went and ran we'll errands. Go course and by stuff. course, make it easy. Yeah, so uh, we were the overall directors, but at Cedar Hill specifically, Jerry Cupadura was the tournament director at Cedar Hill, was the course director. Yep. And Dr. Zachary Hoy was his assistant course director, and they ran tea times and tea music and kept everything running on schedule the entire weekend. Um, and handled a lot of fumbles and uh, bumbles, weird, weird, weird situations, uh, which we'll probably get into. They're super here flexible, shortly. those guys. Yeah, they're really good at what they do, for the sure. Tech savvy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Cedar Hill was covered. Uh, we also had, I want to say thanks to uh, Sean Sinclair, the events manager for the PDGA, for being our designated marshal and PDGA liaison and designated go-to and designated rules enforcer. He was the he got he got to be the iron fist while you got to be the the velvet glove at, at one point. <laughs> and, I like that. Yeah. That's pretty good right yeah. there. The velvet glove. So, uh, so that was fun, and we'll probably get into that later too. Uh, oh, why? Why? We? Why not? I mean, um, and then because it's become a thing, I haven't even updated you. Dude, oh, um, um, even beyond MCO. So yeah. Anyway. Oh really? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I thanks, was hoping it would just go and uh, die. <laughs> yeah. So thanks to Sean Sinclair, uh, not only for being our Marshall and PDGA liaison, but for being 
a very, very good friend of ours. And thanks uh, for being Sean Sinclair. Buddy. Yeah, thanks for being Sean Sinclair, dude. Thanks to your I'm glad you exist, and yeah, I'm glad you're a good fella. I'm glad you're not one of the people that hate me. <laughs> well, <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, but no, Sean is uh, amazing, and just having him and the the support of the PDGA. And thank you to everybody else at the PDGA. We this has been a long, ongoing process involving multiple people. Thank you to uh, Big Dog Andrew Sweeten. Thank you to Mike Downs. Thank you to Todd Lyon. Thank you to our outgoing this year uh, PDGA State Coordinator for Tennessee, Rod Norton. Thank you to, um, you know, uh, Metro thank Par- you to, Metro yeah. Parks. Yeah, thanks to Metro Parks too. But yeah, so I want to count through the staff. So we've got uh, Cedar Hill. We had Cane Ridge was Robert Zavala and Lyndon Lance, and they ran everything at Cane Ridge the entire weekend. Seven Oaks was Danielle Dobbs and Katie Holbrook. Yeah, yeah. And Two Rivers was Kyle Copeland and Ruth Miller. And a um, special nod to Zachary Evans, who has headed up the renovation project at Two Rivers for the last two years. He, uh, late notice, got called into work for that weekend and was not able to join us, but. Um, still gets a nod as a staff member because of everything he's contributed to getting two rivers back into the MCO rotation. So definitely no, uh, disregard will be allowed of Zach Evans and his contributions to William Rick. golf. That's next on the list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, I skipped over, um, I was saving the best for last. I was trying to, I don't want to miss anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Naval Hill, Justin Martineau and Kyle Batten, Justin Martineau, for those who aren't aware Works with the Nashville Disc Golf Store and Sean Groden. He is the TD of most of the events on the Nashville Disc Golf Store uh, circuit, if not mm-hmm. all of them. Uh, knows his stuff. Is a good dude to have in a uh, in the trenches with you if you're mm-hmm. planning a big event because he knows what the rules are. He knows how to enforce them, and he's willing to do so. And I respect the hell out of him <laughs> for that, Justin. Yeah. Uh, if you're if, if you hear this or or see this. I love you. I respect the shit out of you for always being of the the same mind. We've had many conversations, yes. he and I, about um, how important it is to be willing to enforce rules and be willing to be the bad guy sometimes and disappoint people, especially people that think they that you might, I don't know, With such a, bend in their favor manner. in some way. Uh, which He's I the last I person know. you expect to, to be a rule enforcer, but bro. No, he does it. He he's do not let his uh he's called me to task a couple times. You. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, Oh, he lets you know. Yeah, and Kyle Batten who um another one of the oh, the Kyle. new generation of the uh, the future brass of this club, I'll just put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um Kyle Batten is one of my favorites and uh, and he Always. stepped up in a big way and I saw him a couple times exhausted, sweating, figuring stuff out. Dude, and he teaches during COVID. Yeah, he's a school teacher. So goodness during gracious. COVID, yeah, he's he's an exemplary human being. I love him mm-hmm. very much. Um, so thank you to Justin and Kyle. And that's all the courses. But I also want to say a special thanks, as you mentioned, to our friend William Rick, our event manager, lifesaver for the 2020 Music City Open, because had it not been for him, uh, we would have had I no did. idea where where the volunteers were at. No, or. Half the I certainly wouldn't. So yeah, William, dude, William in my book he could he does no wrong. He always comes through. He always is is solid. Straight like, up honest. Anytime something came up on the fly that whole weekend, I called two people. It was William Rick and then you. If I couldn't get a hold of William, mm-hmm. and then I knew that if I couldn't get a hold of either of you, one of you would call me back. Yeah, <laughs> within a few minutes. Hoy was like, "Here's my phone. Will wants to talk to you." And I was like, "Where's my? I did it." Yeah, <laughs> where is where is my phone? And it was I was using it for uh, the music at the time. Yeah, William was. It was whose idea was it to make uh, the events manager his or yours? I don't know, but like, great idea. Like that's huge. Well, it it was. I it know was, he said it was my about, idea. I want a staff shirt this year. I heard something about that. Well, but. he's always been ride or die for MCO, and he's always showed up when we came when we called. You know what I mean? Like anytime you've ever asked for help especially at Ravenwood. Like, remember the, the oh, machete I, story? I was going to say, you give your story. I'm giving mine. So go. What's your, is I, your story the machete story? No, mine's the, the Costco uh, okay. water pallet. Yeah, good idea. Um, 
yeah, the machete story. So I think this was, it was either 2017 or no, it had to be 2018. Uh, MCO. Your first or second? First time as TD yep, so as, as the tournament director. Yeah. Um, and I had, you know, I was, I was out there weed eating every day after work and, and I was putting out calls to, for help and, and saying, please, if Anybody. you're free and you have a weed eater or a mower or anything that can scissors. cut, cut plants. <laughs> yeah. A pair of scissors. We could probably figure it out. Yeah. Come on and help. And William Rick shows up with a machete. He had it. And you know, that point. On the edge of the Green Lake, where if you're coming down from hole 10. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right there where the deer. 10, yeah. Roughly where the deer was. Right. Mm-hmm. So then it's like you're coming across that green pond where the pump house is. You're going across. There's that point where the basket sits. Yeah. So that entire point gets lined with this big leafy green substance. Yeah, I know that substance. No, it's not that substance. But it's like these giant leaf. Like the leaves are as big as my for- forearm and broad. like water lilies. Like, yeah, it's crazy. And like, so this entire bank around that side of the of the lake or the, of that pond was totally overgrown with them. Yeah. And when we were all standing together, we were saying, "Well, this needs to get cut. That needs to get cut. That needs to get cut." That was part of the spot that was mentioned. We thought we would send a few guys with weed eaters out there to cut that stuff down. And we all parted ways and went off to our various projects. And then it, when we were all done, but when it started to get dark, we came back. And I, as I was driving back down the hill, I noticed that entire bank, that entire side of the pond was clean. And he had done it entirely by hand with a machete, with a machete in like an hour. I didn't know what machete The guy's brand, a monster. <laughs> yes, he is. But like what brand machete was that? Because I have no yeah, mach- machete making. Yeah, and then when I caught up to him, he was not uh, phased by it w- whatsoever. He was like, no, oh, that was, you know, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to William Rick. Thank you for all your help for all these years. Yeah, and he deserved a staff spot. But always, um, real quick on the Costco story, I want to just to add to that. Yeah, your your story, your William Literally, Rick story. Costco donates a pallet of water to the MCO last year, I believe it was. Yep. William Rick goes to pick it up. We haven't heard from him. He's running late. That's not like William. He's always on time or close to. He comes roaring through uh, <laughs> player central and tournament central. I'm like, what in the world? Who is this? And I didn't know he had that big truck at the time. I'm like, what is going on? I was like, somebody is not happy. <laughs> and he pulls up and he gets out of the car. He's like, the daggone. This is not the words he used, but the pallet broke basically. And as he was pulling out of Costco, took a turn, and the whole thing just dumped out like yep. in the Costco parking lot. And so he picked up by himself basically half a pallet of water individually because these, these, the pallet comes, and they have 48 in a, in a case, and they bust it open too. And he comes rolling up with a bed full of, like, individual bottles of water. <laughs> like, I mean, out of the parking lot, I just – <laughs> uh, props to you bro sounds like him i don't know if i could have been a big enough man to pick sounds all like up. the right guy that's yeah you are the man brother and you saved us and saved me personally two days that i you know slacked we'll get to that but you saved me big time brother so thank you you're you are again the bee's knees yep and uh two other specific people that deserve to be shouted out Derek savory at dynamic discs for arranging such a sweet deal on our players packs. Um, and for always just being a text message away, even when he's got all sorts of crazy stuff going on in his life. You're a good friend, sir. I love you very much. And I hope you and Nikki are good. Um, we missed you this year too, bud. Yep. And we'll hopefully see him next year when we go to hopefully GBO. So. Um, second person, second person would be Scott Lewis at Heiser flip disc yeah. golf apparel. Because he kept us looking fresh with our staff shirts. He kept our volunteers looking fresh with their their volunteer <laughs> shirts. With the- and all the competitor shirts for 614 players. Because at Music City Open, we don't just give AMs free stuff. Pros we also give the pros a t-shirt. We love you pros too. Yep. And everybody loves t-shirts. And we pay for that out of pocket. Thank you very much for all the questions that are probably going to come from that statement. And we'll get to that in a minute as well. 
<laughs> yeah. Not out of like parse. We're in the podcast. positive side of the podcast pre-break. And then once we do the break, then we'll come back and we'll tell you guys what really grinds our gears. See, it feels like just like a second of a break but in reality it could be like 12 hours who knows yeah you oh. never know we're gonna come back to the same space uh but eventually eventually um but going back to the mco and going back to one the, more person one more group to thank one more group to thank actually there's lots of group uh, i want to say thank you to our media because due to our event permit with metro we weren't allowed to have spectators mm. and so we had to double up on media and with the nt and the pdga media agreement pushing to 2021 we had to double up on media and pay for it all out of pocket. So that was a, a, a setback that we faced. But I want to thank very, very much, very special thanks to Gatekeeper Media, Derek Skull and Chris German, um, Ace Run Pro, Felix and Conrad, Felix mm-hmm. Vega and Conrad, um, <coughs> and also to uh, Ben Howard and his buddy Chris because Howard Disc Golf, Ace Run Pro, and Gatekeeper Media all committed to covering the Music City Open when we had zero budget for media and we were trying to double up and they wanted to be here. They offered their services, services, services. And I said, I can definitely get you a place to stay and I can make sure that you don't have to spend any money while you're here. Um, and I will be trying to raise some money to pay you. And our fundraiser discs, thankfully sold very, very well. Yes, they did. And we had uh, support from a couple of our sponsors. So, um, you know, we were able to, we, we did not pay any of the media providers what they deserve. We, I, I will say that right now. I'm not going to divulge numbers, No, but, uh, actually they're out there if you really want to know. Them, but... I mean, like not here on the podcast, I'm not going to say what we, what we paid. I mean, we did not pay the full rate, the going rate for any of these media providers and Hey, we're just me and you now. We, we, we I mean, they're if... contracted for next day coverage at disc golf. Pro, like gatekeeper is contracted for next day coverage at disc golf pro tour events. Mm-hmm. So they get a certain amount per event. And you know, so that's why you guys haven't seen a lot of the coverage yet, but I did speak to Conrad at ACE run pro today and the videos are just about done and they're going to be sending them our way. And Jay and I are going to lay some commentary on them. We're thinking about inviting our friends, Sean and Sarah Sinclair. Yeah. We're going to drop the big skinny on you again, fellas. We're bringing big skinny back. Big skinny big commentary. Hype. And we're going to try to do a little better. Yeah. We're in We're in it for redemption this time around. <laughs> the big skinny redemption? Yeah, the big the comeback. That's, I like it. Yeah. We're going to need it after the first one. Yeah. After the first one. Um, I got my list here. I just want to go over volunteer-wise. I got names. Just to Yes, thank you. Deserve a Please do. Out. Yeah. Now, guys, I apologize if I didn't get any of these names. Some of these guys were like day of. Sunday, I got to say this right quick. Had a lot of volunteers on that Sunday. Really had some uh, spotters out there. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to see. That was the plan. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that on Sunday. Hey, Everything we did help. was well within the terms of our event permit with Metro. I promise you. Uh, Metro. 100%. Uh, I want to thank... All these guys, I'm going to go through them real quick because these are the volunteers. Chris Denton, Ryan Tracy, Caden McCormick, Jay Coleman, Gunnar Dunnigan. Dunnigan, I believe that's right. Ron Ron Six. I, you got it. Sean McCain. Well, Ron was a different one, but he his heart was in the right place. Uh, also, I want to thank Tara Cravens. Massive thanks to her. Uh, yes, love you, Tara. Thank you. Uh, when she reached out to me, I, I was literally was like, yes, because. She saved me a drive to Cane Ridge on day two. She's literally a TD up at uh, our boys and girls up at NTDGA. Is that right? Did I get that right? MTDGA, yeah. Yes. I always mess that up for some reason. But, dude, she's a She she's runs a everything star. by herself for the most part. Not by herself. I'm just saying. Yeah, they got some a little bit of help, but she's she's a TD. And when she reached out, it was it was nice because it was. She's the me of Rutherford County. And stuff. Shout out to anybody else I left out at all the courses because I didn't get everybody's names. Again, it's on William Rick because he handled a lot of that for me, took took over that for me. Um, but thank you guys. That's that's so awesome. That oh, what was the guy's name at Pavilion? The the gentleman who is on unfortunate times. Him and his dog. I know uh, his dog's name was Charlie Diamond. Charlie Brown is what he told me his name was. I his don't dog's name was Diamond. Diamond. Yeah, and he told yep. me his name was Charlie Brown. Take it as I, I of you. course made friends with the dog. Yeah. Take it for his name or not, but anyway. He was up there. We made him a volunteer because he was there anyway. Uh, and Joe and Jonathan. Joe and Jonathan. Yeah, they were on 16 and 17. Yep. Doing that. Thanks to them. Ace run coverage. 
Um, that was Ryan Tracy. The, Ryan the, Tracy. Those were spotters. Joe and Jonathan were spotters. Okay. Were spotters. Spotters. David sir. Westrom, massive shout David out to Westrom. you, brother. See, what I'm saying there's so many of them. Chris that Harris out that for helping out with crowd control. Marcus Rogers, who couldn't join us tonight. Um, Love you, buddy. He went out and did official scorekeeping for FPO card or MPO two. I think it was FPO. If he's still not back in a couple of days and you're listening to this, Marcus, hey, yeah. let us know where you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, man, too many volunteers. Brian Henry. Uh, that's I can't think of. Flight Co. needs to be thanked. Brian Henry for uh, helping out at Seven Oaks and at Cedar Hill. Uh, Bradford Watson for sponsoring media coverage and putting a commercial in there together, putting it together on the fly. Uh, Twice. In yeah, I mean, dude, there were so many people. Um, thank you to London Smith for also uh, London, yeah. volunteering. Um, thank you to – who else did I see? It? Rick Mac Garner. Bishop. Um, yeah, Mac Bishop, Rick Garner for taking uh, still photos for us, Brittany Dickerson for uh, taking photos for us. Yep. Um, of course, it's a lot of pic- a lot of pictures of Chris, anybody, anybody but... <laughs> who took pictures and posted a lot of pictures of Chris. Well, she, the... I think she did most of the Prodigy people, but yeah, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, I was about to say a lot of pictures of Chris and the Prodigy guys, but hey, Prodigy's on a sweep of the Music City Open for the last like what four years, and Alden Harris. Congratulations, man! Um, okay, out of nowhere, I, like honestly, I had no idea who you were, bud. <laughs> oh, interesting story there. Yeah, there's I, a funny story there. Gonna we're say, gonna tell it here and nowhere else. Can we agree on that? Agreed. Okay, for sure. It, was, it puts me kind of um, well. Um, both of us, in a sense, uh, <laughs> we're a team. I'd seen the <laughs> big skinny. Everybody, I'd seen the um, plaid and pictures. Yeah, but in real life. It's dope. Dude, those those awesome. This is so fresh. I wonder if it's it was so his or Brittany's idea, but they, they well, whoever's it was, it was a great idea. Prodigy dude, I have it on a uh, uh, good authority that Prodigy is under new leadership in a certain really? capacity and uh the people like on the business side are more of a marketing and traditional business mind. And so I think you're going to start probably seeing a lot more cool stuff from Prodigy awesome. over the next year or two. And there <clears throat> might be some big surprises involving Prodigy over the next year or two. There, every year there's big surprises in disc golf. It's just it's kind of like Christmas and after Christmas when everything rolls over in the new year, you get all the big announcements. Yeah, which yeah, is, for sure. Anyway, back to the MCO. But um, yeah, so congratulations to Alden Harris for winning, and congr- congratulations to Holly Finley yep. for being uh, crowned the FPO champion. And she oh. is with Innova. Yes, right. she's Team Innova, yeah. Team many other things. Uh, she's she amazing. Also, yep, and wonderful human being. Got out and did the uh, uh, play with the pros as well. Yeah, and another shout out to William Rick for organizing the practice with a pro event. Um, Eric yeah. Oakley, Johnny McRae, Holly Finley, Callie Allie. McMorrin, a uh, bunch of people got to take Chase. advantage of that. Chase, Chase, Chase got like though. seven people. Had, dude. How do uh, seven? What he had the biggest get, honorage of this golf, and literally they all play with him at Henry Horton all the time. And I was like, and you guys paid money to play with him again? Hey man, that's I how Tennessee it. rolls, man. It. And Chase, we are family. Keep up the good work. I know you get discouraged sometimes. You get down on yourself, bro. You're a boss disc golfer, and the, he needs to get out of his the, head. The sky is the limit for you, dude. Brother. He he's got immense talent, and and. Just seeing some of the video clips I have of him playing at Jonesboro, dude, and the fact that he's going out there and he's and he's actually like stepping outside of his comfort zone mm-hmm. and his envelope a little bit, I'm super stoked for Chase. Chase is a really good kid, man. And he's come a very long way in his his upbringing and life, and and dude, stay after it, man, because you got you you gotta make it. You're I love Chase, dude. He, I I always get a good vibe from him. Um, I think he's young and he's got he's got some things to learn. But, Dude, if you can't catch a vibe off of that 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 laugh, laugh of his, it gets me every yeah, time. Yeah, that smile, he's those so baby infectious. blues. Yeah, he's so I mean, he's so pretty. Yeah, I won't go that far. I mean, he's pretty. He doesn't get that from me. He's got those baby blues and that infectious smile. He's like he does have an infectious smile. Yeah. I love that kid. See, we're bragging about you. We're on here, Chase. Yeah. So get off of us. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that was the the positive, the thank yous. Um, a, I, I think we more? need. I think there's we, so many positives. I think but. I gotta also say, dude, I, I, this needs to be pounded into the dirt. But uh, Doctor Hoy, dude, God, the man, God bestowed a gift upon disc golfers in Nashville, Tennessee, 
and that gift's name is Dr. Zachary Hoy. Uh, could not be here tonight. He's busy saving babies as per that's what usual. he does in his off time. In his off time. Yeah. Um, that's what he does to keep the lights on. I feel like Rochester hates us because of that. No. <laughs> they, I mean, they probably they lost him. They hate us because of him and Derek. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, Dr. Hoy, man, I, I, again, I'm always at a loss for words for his contributions to what we're building and his contribution to the smoothness and the just perfect execution of this enormous of disc golf event, this historic disc golf event, it would not have been possible were it not for him. He is the linchpin, the kingpin of the entire operation. I mean, his attention to detail, his knowledge of every moving part, his willingness to get up from his seat while he's running tea times for 14 hours for three days straight. He gets up between each tea time and sweeps the tea pad fresh. He fell he fell asleep at his desk doing pants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, a, that's all you guys And The man's a, a legend. I, I mean, I was always, before Dr. Hoy came around, I was always the first boots on the ground and the last boots off without fail. And as soon as he showed up, I had a hard time beating him to the course. And Dude. We, and we always left at the same time. And I I, I just, I, I have, man, I, I, not only do I have like this supreme appreciation and respect for Dr. Hoy, but I also have this like deep inner feeling that most of the people that play disc golf in Nashville have no idea how much of the the good quality disc golf they enjoy is due to Dr. Hoy's influence and I his know. presence here. I mean, he's made us better people just in general. In general. And better yeah. and better board members and better tournament directors, 100%. Yeah, and and you know, the standard that we have constantly been raising in all our years of involvement in this club and like with Alan and Josh and Andrew and and Mike and Danielle and everybody that came before us and like we're we're trying to constantly push that bar, and it was like Doctor Hoy showed up and ripped the bar out of our He's hands. Like, all I want to do is tea time, and just guys. put it way up here. It was like, all right, catch up, get on my level, dude. Like, I mean, like, and I'm Agreed. so grateful. I mean, and for me personally, like, I'm you know, I'm very much. I learned from Alpo. Me, me and Alpo are really good friends, and I'm very much one of the things. You know, we talked a little bit about the differences and the similarities sure. between me and Alpo off air, but like. One of the similarities is that we're both idea guys. We're both, you know, uh, yeah, visionaries always, always. to some extent. But, like, for me, I'm so ADD and so static that, like, if an idea populates itself and spawns in my brain it's gone. and I vocalize it and there's nobody there to capture it and, and hold write on it, to it, it, it just disappears into the ether. And I remember, like, 2019 GBO – went as well as it did or not GBO MCO went as well as it did because on the way back from GBO, we had 11 hours where I was driving. He had his laptop open in, in the passenger seat. And I was just, we were, he was asking me questions. I was talking and he was recording everything. And like, we had 11 hours straight where I, we just talked about MCO and all that stuff that I was just saying as my brain was working, got put down. And oh, then, oh, I remember I got a three hour summary. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it was just, that, I mean, so many amazing moments with Dr. Hoy. And, like, every time we, we run an event, I mean, I'm just always impressed by his. his Constant state of professionalism. His steadfastness. You know? He is a rock. You cannot move Dr. Hoy. Mm, I can't. I mean, like, yeah. Well, Dr. Hoy has been moved. But, like, I can, like, as far as, like, the time, I could count the times that I have seen Dr. Hoy maybe fluctuate off his de his usual path he's a child doc man he, of expression boom, less constant. than less than i can count on one hand i mean like dude he's what's cool about it is i think we've all equally learned from each other and yeah that, that's another thing that's that's a rare thing because when you have somebody who walks up and he just wants to do tea times the very first time you ever meet him and you're just like okay i'll give you do it man see yeah. what you got and then from that point on was like in like Flynn, basically, there's not that can't really. There's not a bigger or a better testament, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we uh, we touched on media coverage a little bit. So you obviously heard MJ18 round two, MP40 round three is up on the Harper Thompson Disc Golf channel. Uh, Danny Lindahl will probably be releasing some videos on the Dynamic Disc channel uh, in the coming days. Everything's kind of on hold until after USDGC because so many of the media providers are invested in that event as well. Yes. But, uh, you know, uh, shout out to Ace Run Pro because I want to say Ace Run Pro, Howard Disc Golf, and Gatekeeper Media have collaborated. Mm -hmm. And they're sharing clips of each other's coverage in their e each other's videos. Yep. So there's going to be a cohesive, almost interactive Hype. storytelling experience with the media coverage. So should we not give away a whole lot? Maybe. I mean, people can look it up, but like, should we? No, we can, we can mention this stuff because who's going to watch and listen to the podcast? <laughs> Whoever well, I mean, does. I love the story sometimes if you don't. Yeah. Know. Well, that's the part of it that we're, that most coverage is lacking is like a storytelling component or element oh, to it. Damn social media. Yeah. <laughs> but me and Jay, you know, we, we've dabbled in commentary once before <sighs> and we are coming back strong. And we're going to knock this out of the park. Revenge is going to happen, man. It has to happen. Yeah. I can't go out like that. Yep. First and only that. Mm. So we both agree that we, we weren't very good at commentary our first time. and We had moments of greatness and moments of epic yeah. failure. So thank you guys for not roasting us. Story of my disc golf game. Yeah. 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 yeah my, I could say that too. Yeah. So, I mean, but I, I also think that we've been at this mm -hmm. a lot longer now. And now we have... Better, um, better. You know, we're, we're more used to, and plus just our setup, like you and I can both sit on that side of the table and look at the video on the monitor and Last I can, I can move, it. yeah, I can move the soundboard and the computer right up next to us. We can both be looking at the same thing and it'll be, you know, I think we used a footstool and a nightstand last time. It was a coffee table. Was we were both on the same sectional couch. That's right. And I had my iPad up playing the video while my laptop recorded our audio on one microphone on GarageBand. <laughs> yep. Go that... GarageBand. And the audio was great. The audio quality wasn't bad. I mean, yeah. well, not great, but it was it wasn't bad. Could have been worse. Sure. I, I've heard worse on the media echo. coverage of big events. Oh, other places, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was going to say right quick, on top of the media coverage and the video coverage, this is the first time working with Ace Run and Gatekeeper for, for the both of us. Yeah. Wonderful guys, dude. They're Just awesome. Generally, wonderful people. So it was really nice to to get to meet those guys and have them aboard and and want to be a part of it. And then on top of it, knowing that they're all stand up, wonderful dudes and Ace Run, get to talk with those guys and Gatekeeper and see where their mindsets were for the future. It's looking bright. Yeah, man. And they're so easy to work with. And they just Super want to get easy. along. They want to collaborate. They want to work together and make good stuff happen. And they're like men after my own hearts. And well, they were looking out for us too with the with the people that kind of snuck out and started yeah, watching yeah. some golf. They let us know, like, hey, you got some guys. Well, Derek and I became buds. Um, we played in uh, Disc Golf Examiner's virtual putting league during yeah, the yeah. quarantine, mm -hmm. and then and, you know, then we just kind of like clicked and started talking to each other. And that was how you know he had told me, you know, I really want to come to Nashville. I, you know, I, I, and that that was how that whole conversation developed. Um, so now, you know, that was the benefit of that was I can get a text message from Derek while he's filming lead card on hole 11, 12 yeah. and saying, man, there's a lot of people out here that may not, don't look like they need to be here. And, and so they were a presence in that as well. I also want to say thanks to Beth Mater, um, and our boy blue because Beth, uh, hooked us up with lodging for Ace Run Pro, Felix and Conrad. Awesome. Got a nice, spacious hotel room to stay in with a kitchenette and all Heck sorts yeah. of stuff. Thanks to Beth. So, love you, Beth. Rocking it. She Man. didn't even play disc golf. No, she just, you She's know, just awesome. she just loves us. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why. We don't Always be taking care of Blue. We don't deserve it. Man, there's probably so many other people we need to thank. I, that's why I was like, man, if we start naming names, I know we'll forget people. We don't mean to. It was just a lot. Like I, like you were saying, there was names you were dropping, and they walked off of hole six at our course, and I was like, they've been there the whole time. Yeah. And shout out to Publix and Daniel Dobbs for getting that arranged and getting uh, lunches arranged for those guys. Yeah, and Danielle uh, hooked that up big time, and it was a super easy process. I was able to basically show up at Publix in Donaldson at 1030 each morning and pick up a bunch of trays, plastic-like enclosed trays of 
uh, cut up wraps yeah. of different kinds Delicious and then go and drop them off at all the courses. So all the staff and volunteers had lunch and didn't have to worry about eating. Um, it wasn't, you know, anything special, but, no. uh, also, but obvi- also I was reminded it wasn't anything special because Ruthie <laughs> was like, is it going to be wraps every day? Because we're kind of bougie over here at two rivers and, uh, bougie at her two and River, Kyle baby. Copeland were probably eating sushi. What do they have? They had Uber Eats drop off and stuff. Pho. What? They had Uber Eats drop them off stuff. Dude, they were probably eating way better than any of us did. But What's Ruthie th- was like, no, it's like, I'm totally down to take care of two rivers. I was like. Well, awesome! You're saving me drive time, but I'm jealous what, of what's going on over there. Because I what was aggravating is I didn't think of calling Uber Eats myself. Yeah, right. I ran to Jacket Box two days and paid for it later. But I, uh, dude, you know what else I did? Just I did Jack in the Crack too, man. I I got the tacos, man. I did, the I, I tiny saw, tacos. I saw them on the menu and I hadn't had did them. You get the box of the tiny tacos. I got the 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 normal tacos. You think, have you tried the, the tiny tacos? No, I got the, like the two. They're for delightful tacos. The you ones, need to try the tiny tacos. The ones you live off of for like at least six months in your twenties. Sure. Yeah. I yeah. got those again. Just the ones like, that are so terrible, they're re- good. Uh, yes. Dude. Exactly. Reminisce. Bad idea. Do me a favor. Try the tiny tacos. <laughs> are they the, are they like the same? Just small? They're that big. They come in a box like nuggets. And yeah, dude. Dude, we've been talking lots of tacos recently. When, just me and you for some reason. I'm, I'm I'm. It must be a time for us that somebody's saying something. We need some tacos soon. We need some tacos. Don't eat them until Friday. Yep. I won't if you won't. No, I'm, that's why I'm I'm gearing myself up for Friday. All right, I'm down with it. Yeah, because we're gonna have uh, the rehearsal dinner for you and Ashley's wedding. <laughs> Super excited for that because I'm going to be officiating and we're, yeah. I'm going to eat tacos. Thanks for all the staff for dealing with me while I was dealing with the MCO and <laughs> trying to please my fiance and deal with the wedding on top of it if I was short or snippy at any point. It was yeah. not intentional. <laughs> yeah, thanks to uh, Callie McMoran and Erica Weir uh, who were on the podcast last week or two weeks ago for their uh, their patience with our high tension and high uh, emotional myself this lassivitude or i don't i think i might have just made up a word and Um, you know you'll notice if you watch the video or listen to the podcast not typical form for myself you know we do do tend to have some libations on the show and and uh the whole thing basically was i came across as argumentative and sometimes but i was just curious and we don't know how to communicate it we don't need to get into detail because it's all been resolved but we had a really great conversation yeah yeah so if you would like to experience the tension and also hear all the awesome stuff and all the details of the awesome conversation that we had with callie and erica uh, episode seven is already available in audio on all major podcast formats. Yeah. And as of the recording of episode eight, uh, I'm almost done with the final video cut for YouTube of episode seven. So that'll be available soon too. And we're all the bestest of friends to this day. Yeah. And, and really you could just sum it up. The The more accurate way for me to uh, acknowledge Callie and Erica would be to say, thank you for your patience with our antics. Yep. True that. Cause we're, we're boys, we're bros. And uh, we've been at this for a little while together, and, and every once in a sapphire. while, every once in a while, we got a, we got to arm wrestle, um, and we unfortunately did it in front of a couple people that didn't need to witness it. But well, one of they them were good sports beat about it. They, arm they, wrestling, they, yeah, Callie, yeah, she'd smoke us probably. Oh, dude, Callie, yeah, you don't want you don't want it with Callie. Dude, holler at her too. She just got apparently got a new shipment of uh, those. She's after Halo Halos. Central. She's Halo Central. I, I need to know how in the world she's getting these when nobody else on the planet can. Apparently. <laughs> I mean, Jonathan Poole. She's, she's Kelly. She it, she's in his favor. Yep, I guess so. So, um, wanted to. I forgot where I was going. Keep wanted it. to. Wanted to remember tell what I was going to say. How much I love you lately. Oh man, I've been listening to a ton of those recently, trying to make some playlists. Crooners. We had some real fun with the playlist at MZO with some blank guys. Hey, we've told you if you don't make. Or pick a song, we shall pick it for you. And yeah. if you don't want a song, put no music. Speaking of Harper Thompson and the the MP40 coverage, John Burlingame was caught on the first tee with Boogie in the Butt playing as his team music. Yeah, I think if somebody at every course got Boogie in the Butt. Had to have. I love. I love it. I know you do. It's like your go to. But I mean, of all people, John Burlingame. Like you could pick a song, dude. I mean, come on. Like he said, no. Just blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm going to warn you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick something funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. That we, I think is funny. <laughs> we do go clean humor typically for the MCO, but we do try to make it funny. Yeah. 
Boogie or in the Butt by the Eddie Murphy. The past. Look it up. We did a lot of nineties. I think uh, Coop gave uh, one. It was Melton or one of the one of the higher rated guys gave him a Hootie and the Blowfish, and he was a younger guy. And he was like, "What song is this?" And I did one of those. <laughs> he was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> he was like, "Who's Hootie and the Blowfish?" I was, Are you I, serious? I gotta go. <laughs> Are you serious, right now? Yeah. You're hurting my feelings. But it was uh, it was a fun event, man, and we have a lot of fun with that music. So. Pick your song or or don't. We have more fun if you don't. Yeah. Um, and on that note, I think we've we've done all the pleasantries and we we have set the tone. Shall we break and then come back? I with think the, we're gonna uh, break. Yeah, I need to. I need to go to the bathroom. I need to go to Tinkle the Town. Tinkle Town. I need to go to Tinkle Town and then we I hate come you back for that. By the way, and then we argue. I say that to my children now because of you. You know what I love? What? That when I come over to your house. Your daughter yells for me and wants to. She wants, loves wants her, me uncle to hold her. She's a dude. That is, she is. That's all the assurance I need in life. She is a lover, but she is mean as shit at the same time. At She's times. never been mean to me. Maybe it's just, just wait. You. Wait till she really, really loves you hard and she <laughs> smacks the crap out of you for not doing what she wants. Well, she gave me a pat on the poop poot. Yeah. What, was that? what do you call that? Call that pow pow. Pow pow. Yeah, she gave me a pow pow. I was in trouble. She spanked me. Yeah. The Christmas goose come yeah, early. She thinks it's hilarious when you say it to her, too, and you're being serious, and she just laughs at you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway.
Let's do it. Wow. Oh, sorry. We're back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> What's up? Hi. What's up, guys? So, yeah, we're back from the break. Um, I hope you enjoyed all those slow-mo videos from yep. Music City Open Drives. 12 by, hours. That were filmed by Marcus Rogers. Um, good good filming you did there. Yeah. And, Dan, those guys, even in slow-mo, they look powerful. Yeah. It's crazy. Some of them that we just included, you don't even get to see the full flight of the disc, but just the form. like, And then you see some cool stuff like Earhart and Clemens doing lefty forehands. Like on seventeen, yeah, well, that was, stuff's crazy. I remember, saw the girthy one, and I'm like, "What, kind of, what is he doing?" Because the form looked very off, like off to me. But then realized he was on eighteen and was throwing a roller, and I was like, "Ah, that makes sense now." Well, it, and the thing with with Garrett's form too is it seems counterintuitive because, like for me, coming from uh, uh, other disc sports before I became a disc golfer. It's like the one thing you have to train yourself is not to cross, you know, like if you're used to throwing a lid, you know, you're used to like kind of throw reaching back under your arm mm -hmm. and using your arm to throw and your wrist a lot. So it's almost, you know, that's why they, a lot of tutorials will say to try to get your left arm or your not, your non throwing arm down out of the way, like put it by your side or get it out behind you or whatever. So that it's not in, in influencing the direction of your reach back. Well, Garrett, almost looks like he reaches under his arm but he just has his arm up high like he turns around backwards like that and it's almost like at certain angles it looks like he's reaching under his arm but then you see his his pull and his follow through and then you see his full rotation and his arms spread out you know what i mean and his mm -hmm. body completely paints the line it's so, like a little bit of the old school left in him still yeah it was a different teaching back then yeah a different it, way to throw it it's just awesome to see you know, some of those slow-mos that Mark has captured really point out some uh, things that the pros are doing with their form and their mechanics mm -hmm. that we are not. Yeah. And kind of drawing a line between the pros and the amps. Now. But real quick, it points out that like certain forms, even though they may not look ideal to what is considered perfect or whatever, if there is a perfect. Well, Oakley's in there with his, his big. Absolutely. But those forms still get the job done. Yeah. So I just. As a disc golfer coming up, I struggle with, like, my form. I'm getting my disc there. I'm doing well. But my form looks like crap. Like, if it's working, I'll let it work for you. Well, even if you're Garrett or Oak or Oakley and you're doing something that's not traditional. Mm, that's a good That one. makes your throw look, like, unique. The, yeah. Then, I mean, if you really pay attention to the details, even though Oakley has an arm way up in the air and he's reaching out in front of him, Right before he throws, he's pulling from here. You know what I mean? Like, he's he's got that same. Yeah. You know, there is a fundamental mechanic to this. But you can make it your own. Hippies. Hips. It's, it's hips. weird, though, because we know about this mechanic. We just can't figure it out. Exactly. I can explain it to everybody. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. Much better coach than a player. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be an episode of the last cash podcast if we didn't gripe a little bit. And some of you guys got it coming, man. And I'm too professional to put it in names and, we and blast anybody out. Give the story and then the gripe or the gripe and then the story. I don't even know, man. There's so many gripes and stories. Well, let me start it off with my own fuck ups that I gripe myself at and props to every one of you guys for understanding and knowing me that you didn't rag me about it. <laughs> um, so as a TD of assistant TD of the entire event, never done this before. I was late by an hour the first hour, hour and a half the first day, and two. Oh, hours that one the that one wasn't day. even on my radar. <laughs> no, no, I know that because it like like you said, it flowed so smoothly, and we had so many of the right people in the right spots. It took care of itself, and props to you guys for covering my rear end. But like, literally, for the people who don't know, I'm very, very deep sleeper, and for some reason. I didn't wake up <laughs> two days in a row. However, on the third day, top notch I was. <laughs> yeah, you beat me there. But that was the first like little bitty tiny blip that really wasn't a blip because of our excellent staff and volunteers. But that was kind of like the stuff you don't see from behind, you know, if yeah. you're just playing or spectating or just there. I think we the, screw up too. The main thing I want to gripe about is how many people playing in professional divisions 
seemingly have never seen the PDGA rule book or the tour standards or the competition manual. Hmm. Or I know where you're going, brother. Uh, I mean, like when it comes to the most popular questions, I withdrew the day after the registration closed. Why did I not get a refund? Um, you know, that was the big one. Mm-hmm. And from people who should know, I mean, I had to have the conversation with more pros than AMs. Mm-hmm. The AMs were surprisingly cool with it. The yep. AMs were like, I explained, okay, per PDGA competition manual, article 1.03F, if you withdraw from the event after the advertised close of registration, you are not eligible for a refund or a player's pack. Unless there's an immediate. Unless there is an immediate waitlisted, a waitlisted player available to immediately take that spot. Thanks, guys. We now know the article. That's the real article. 1.03F. Yep. Yeah. He knows Competition that. manual. So, um, there were a bunch of people that were like, well, you ended up filling that empty spot in that division before the first round. Why didn't I get my refund? Well, because there was nobody on the wait list when you withdrew. And after the close of registration, there is no wait list. Like it's, it, it's self-service. You know what I mean? But like that rule, no longer that, that clause in that rule no longer applies. So anyway, it's basically like we had to have a lot of, uh, I had to have a lot of conversations with people that were upset and frustrated and, and I get it. You're not getting your money back, but there's a lot of people coming to this event playing based on a certain projected payout. Absolutely. And if I give you your money back, well, your money comes out of the purse because sure. that's the way it works. AMS players packs. That's the only thing I would say. If you withdraw, you don't get a player's pack. Or yeah. if you give your money to us, or if you don't want your money back, you don't get a player's pack. Basically, the way the rule reads is once you're 30 days out from the tournament, you're eligible for a 50% refund, mm-hmm. or the TD has the option of giving you a player's pack in lieu of a refund. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're entitled to a player's pack yeah. and a refund. And we're not because a lot you of you of one. Do, did seem to think that. Yeah. How do I get my player's pack? Well... If you don't play, you don't get it. Well, and, and Dr. Hoy's not here to correct me, but if you do not compete, you do not get a competitor's pack. So that's the way that works. That ding, is, ding, that ding. rule is written to allow the, the TD of an event an option of giving you a player's pack in lieu of a refund in order to keep from going broke. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of events were canceled at the last minute this year due to circumstances beyond the staff's control. So... Also, yeah. you're not- hey, just so you guys know, if you're an AM and you sign up for a big tournament, you're not guaranteed a player's pack or a competitor's pack. And you're not entitled a payout either. You get a competitor's pack if you compete. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, also read the rules. Yeah. Because it's going to break your heart. And I and, and the only thing that I can assume, and it's really unfortunate, it's an unfortunate assumption to have to make based on my assessment of the feedback I've gotten. But apparently there's a lot of tournament directors out there that just run around willy nilly giving refunds to people because of, uh, I don't, I mean, it, it just really amounts to nepotism. It's uh, I've sprained my ankle. No, it, I mean, it's like, okay, if you're Joe Smith in MA three and you sprain your ankle warming up before your tournament, and I deny you a refund, but you're some big name, ten twenty guy. rated plus pro, and you uh, just kind of throw your hip out or something, or your shoulder gets a little tense the day before, and you drop out. And I should give you a refund? Like that's the attitude I I kind of picked up on mm-hmm. from in certain circumstances. And dude, I, I'm not gonna play favorites. Like yeah. Well, the flip side that that is is now if I give you that refund, now the other pros are like, "Hey, why is the cash? Why is the payout short now? Why right? Is it, why is it not what you said it was?" Well, and we'll get into the payout here in a minute too because that does that was talked about and deserves to be addressed. But well, you, I mean, you deal with that side of the the TDM part of it more so than I do. I just know that's what we get. Yeah. On the flip side of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well. What better segue? I mean, there were uh, there was a lot of commentary online about the Music City Open payout. 
and I was told about a lot of it going on and never looked at it. Didn't uh, have to, really. I've really gotten to that point where I, uh, I just don't. But I think a lot of people just misunderstood that what was actually going on because the Music City Open was announced originally as the 2020 PDGA National Tour Finale. And I get the impression that a lot of people expected NT payout. Yeah, I think they did. And and it looked like an NT because the, P- the PDGA and everybody was there. Yeah. Uh, visually, it was dope. Um, but let me remind everybody that the entire National Tour Series was pushed to 2021. So with that goes the $10,000 added cash to the NT, which is just MPO, FPO. We had originally planned for $10,000 to spread between just those two divisions yep. and then another three for the age-protected pros yep. in the eights here. And any fundraising we accumulate throughout the year. Yeah. So not only did that push, so but also the tour standards were lowered. So that minimum added cash for an eight tier is not the traditional 3000 but it was now 2000 And that's spread among all professional divisions. Yeah. Don't blame it on us. Blame it on the COVID. The COVID and the PDGA calculator. I mean, like everything, like for anybody that has a complaint, I mean, like we ran our numbers based on the PDGA algorithm and we made slight adjustments where we thought it was reasonable, but especially with the projected payout, because that was what everybody got in a tizzy about. And Matt Dollar posted on his Facebook page, a screenshot of the projected payout of Music City Open and of the Fall Hollows Classic. Mm-hmm. 27 players in MPO at the Fall Hollows Classic. First place is 1,500. 140 plus at Music City Open. First place is 1,260. Well, we've got a lot more players from a lot more places. We've got a lot of requirements that we're like, we have to meet in order to even have the event per Metro parks in Nashville. Mm -hmm. We lost almost every business that we have worked with for sponsorship because nobody has any money because of COVID-19. Yeah. The tournaments get a lot of money from vendors too, guys. Yeah. We had to cut a bunch of vending out. Mm -hmm. We had to cut the fly party out. Um, we lost, party. we lost all those vending fees. We lost all that stuff. And then we're not allowed to have spectators. So there's nobody on site to buy stuff yep. anyway. And then because we don't have spectators, we feel we need to double up on media. But because the PDGA NT media agreement pushed with the NT, well, now we have to pay for all that out of pocket. Hello. Welcome to the TD live. Yeah. Then if you're an am that you're that is complaining about the players pack or the payout let's think about it like this you're you're an amateur player you paid seventy dollars to enter this tournament which is essentially practice for your yourself yeah you're you're an amateur you're wanting to be, you're in it for the experience you're in it for practice you're progressing you're trying to reach a pro status maybe and there's a pressure that that that's put there yeah. So seventy dollars, <coughs> uh, we pay. We take four out of that to pay the PDGA per player, because players' fees. Mm-hmm. So now you're left with sixty six. Well, your players pack, which everybody complained about. <laughs> well, really? not everybody. A lot of people were stoked about it. There were several people that were like, "This, this seems." Blah, blah, blah. I thought it was humorous. Well, it was humorous, but it also was high value because yes, you paid seventy dollars to enter the tournament. Your players pack was worth at least $85 retail. Absolutely, it was. We only deducted $40 from your entry to cover the wholesale cost of those players pack items. So now you're left with $26 that goes to payout. So first place in the intermediate might only get $97. And you guys play in large, the largest fields. But you paid $70. You got $85 retail, retail value. Just in the players pack, if you're first place in intermediate, you got almost a hundred dollars in payout in merchandise. You know, plus the ace pots that were all hit. So it's like there's nothing going on here that shouldn't be. And and, and I have a hundred percent success rate in explaining this to people. And for the pros, 
I mean, it's four dollars that comes out of your payout, but it was ninety dollars. You know what I mean? We lowered entry fees. Mm -hmm. We lowered entry fees so that more people could afford to participate and make it a part of their schedule on their way to Jonesboro. And that was a strategic decision that we made. We knew that it was going to, as an A tier, it was going to be an in between stop. Mm -hmm. And we figured, why not try to blow it out? Let's lower entry fees. Try to get some more people in there. Make it easier for more people to commit to it. Let's do that. So we lowered entry fees. Not only that, every every pro, every pro player got a free T-shirt. Yeah, and we broke a. record. It was free to them. It wasn't free to us. We broke a Tennessee record. Yeah, so we 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 bought all those T-shirts for all the pro players, mm-hmm. and the pros were stoked that they got something. You know what I mean? Like everybody wants an MCO T-shirt. Everybody wants a shirt from from the event they they played. Like, well, people, we give we give everybody a T-shirt. We overorder, and people were buying those competitor shirts up. Yeah. So, I mean... Well, I was going to say, too, Will, you know, Zach knows, I know, we follow the PDGA because it's easy and it's already there. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Like, it's there, so we use it. Like, yeah. It's, but the ultimate thing comes down to rules. Like, yeah. you cannot have any level of fairness in an athletic competition without rules. And if you don't enforce the rules the same with everybody... It's equivalent to not having rules at all. I'm going to open up that can. And this came up again in the conversation about a couple pro players that were given 888s. Read the rules, gentlemen. Or, or females. I know there was a lot of 888s. Because I know that most disc golfers and... By translation, probably everybody that listens to this podcast uh, has not read the rules in the competition manual and the tour standards. Um, We'll put it like this. If you do not finish DNF at a tournament, there are two possible codes that a TD can enter for your score. Uh, Have to enter, right? Yeah, you have to enter one of the two. Yeah, you can't. uh, The way you said it, it sounded like it was optional. So. No, no, no. For 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 the event, if you DNF, if you leave the event or do not start it and you DNF, do not finish, there are two possible codes that can be entered for your score. One is an 888, one is a 999. One's good, one's bad. Yeah. Basically, if you get an 888, you take an immediate 10-point hit to your your player rating. Is there not like a minimum suspension involved too? No. Oh. No, it's just an immediate 10-point hit to your player rating. Ouch. For taking an 888. Now, the difference between the two, you might get a 999 entered for your score if you are unable to show up for the tournament because of a family emergency or an injury or anything along those lines and you contact tournament staff before time, before beforehand, and let them know that you're not going to be there. That's some pretty key information. You might get a 999 if, I mean, there's all sorts of circumstances that, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that might, any circumstance that might need, might, yeah. might require you to leave the field tell them how before they, the event's over. Tell them how they might get an 888. Now, the way you might get an 888 is, say... One extreme example would be, let's say you got into an altercation with another player on your card and you were disqualified from the event and removed from the course. That's an 888. At the same time, I mean, and and all of these different scenarios would come with different disciplinary action. But another example of an 888 would be, let's say it's five minutes before your tea time. Nobody's seen you or heard from you. And... You you're you're not there, and then it forces us into a bad situation where we have to pull somebody else off their designated tee time, or God forbid, a pre-negotiated feature card with coverage. So, I mean, there were a lot of players that did not show up. Ams, pros, all alike. Yeah. Every am that show that did not show up and did not contact staff got an eight eight eight. I made sure of it. Same thing with the pros that did not show up at Cedar Hill. And I, I, it's nothing personal, but if I'm going to do it to an am, 
I'm going to do it to a pro. I don't care who you are. Yeah. I don't play favorites. Also contact. And we ended up in a situation where our only two choices were to pull somebody off of a pre-negotiated feature card with media coverage or after an entire day of no delays or backups, send a, a group of five out. Send a log jam out directly in front of the two cards that had cameras on them. Th- those were the two choices we were left with. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we went with the yeah. fivesome because I'm not going to, after I've contacted the player and it's been arranged and people, different people have selected players for the feature card, I'm not pulling somebody off of that. So after a whole day of smooth sailing, it was, you know, a log jam goes out in front of the two cards that have coverage on them. So it, it was, but that's why, you know not- what I mean? Like, understand these are this is how this works you shouldn't be at this point in your like i don't know i I might be about to say too much no i mean what i was gonna say is you if you don't know in disc golf the word feature card is is governed like you can't have a feature card technically without following a certain parameter it has to be for media purposes only yeah it yeah. has to be, and you have to have a TD pick, a sponsor pick. Don't have to. That's just the standard. But okay, the standard. There's different rubrics for how the, the positions are selected. A lot of them are fan votes. Um, the DGPT usually does that. But. So, well, the, the point I was trying to make is there's work put in previous to these cards. Yeah. That yeah. When that happens, it's kind of like, hey, not well, to and, say. And disregard all like, of that. Let's say, you're, like let's say you're Garrett Gurthy, and I've come to you. Yeah, I wish I could throw that far. And I and I come to you mm-hmm. two weeks before the tournament, and I say, "Hey, I need a spot on the feature card. Are you down?" And you're like, "Yeah, man, thank you for the opportunity." And and then you start promoting it, and you start making posts on Facebook and on social media saying, "Hey, I'm going to be on feature card coverage," or the media provider makes a, an announcement, and then all of a sudden, like like, do you really think I'm going to walk up to that person and say at the last minute? Hey, well, because this person didn't show up, I'm going to have to pull you down and put you on a tea time earlier with no cameras. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. No. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. It's crazy talk. <laughs> well, the, I agreed 100%. So basically, the main bullet point of this presentation, because it's getting late, oh, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure I'm about to start getting text messages from my wife, but oh, sorry. these are the things that grind our gears. Oh, no. So we we've got to take it from the top. We've got to keep going. Grind. You got you got some more? No, I was just gonna say grind them, grind those gears, brother. Well, I mean, the main thing is just that I think everybody that either signs up for a professional designation with the PDGA or competes in a professional division, I don't know how you would enforce this, but I feel like it should be required that everybody runs an event. And, and Logan, Logan said this. Logan and Telly ran the Freddie Memorial, and mm-hmm. when we had Logan on, he was like, I think everybody should have to run one so that they understand what these TDs are going through. Mm-hmm. Because, dude, when I tell you, when I give you bad news, like, no, I can't put you on a card with your buddy that's playing in a different division at a, at this 600-plus player event. No, I can't give you a refund when you withdrew from the event the morning after the registration closed. No, I can't give you a player's pack because you're not here. And I need a late tea time because I have to work. Yeah. Like you signed up for. No, I can't give you a tea time after 1230 because you got a job interview. I'm like, there are other people in this event that signed up to have the full experience and take part in the entire event. And they committed this weekend to this event. So if you're trying to knock two birds out with one stone, well, you can go f- yourself. Because, dude, it's a tournament. Like, hey, I applaud them for the, the very gracious. What do you nice want to do? Are you asked. here to play the tournament? Or are you here for a job interview? Make a choice. What's more important to you? I didn't realize somebody was here in town for a job interview and trying to play the tournament. There was, there was <laughs> people that were like, oh, I've got a final yeah, at 10, 10 o'clock. I mean, it was like, dude, I understand. Everybody's got life going on. I got life going on. It was my anniversary over the, the weekend of the tournament. I've got other stuff going on in my own personal life. Sure. I've got my own stuff going on at my job that actually pays me. Like, I understand life happening. But, dude, like... 
it seems a little ridiculous like Heck. that you got 600 people plus from all over the country coming here to play in a tournament and you're going to actually ask me like to cater to you yeah like dude who are you like what are you doing uh, i mean i'm ricky blue eyes and i play novice what's up i, I mean don't you know who i am i i can't do that dude i mean like and here, here's, uh, and the problem I, yeah and i will let you go here yeah, in yeah, just yeah. a second the the problem is that like dude i've been at this so long and i understand so innately both sides of the experience mm-hmm. that i feel disrespected when that happens bec- uh, like on a personal level and, and that's a fault of mine because i shouldn't take it that way because a lot of these people are asking these questions and making these requests because they just don't know any better but at the same time it's like all the information is there you guys you could seek this out on your own you could read the rule book read the competition manual read the tour standards understand divisional guidelines understand that like you can't sign up for an event that seems like work will uh, yeah i mean tell me about it <laughs> i mean you're on the internet probably i don't know 20 to 30 percent of your day anyway reading like why don't you go read this the stuff and the information that you, the sport you play provides for you yeah like, and when you sign up for a tournament read the information that the tds and the the runner the people who run the event provide for you don't just be like oh the music city open i'm gonna sign up without reading any of the information because guess what next year's gonna be even more changes and if you don't know or if you don't ask off for a friday to play a tournament because you have work and you want us to cater to you that for your tea time bro like you why did you sign up you knew you had to be off work yeah i mean and and you guys got to understand like for me from my personal perspective it goes back. To it was three days for you. It was three days of playing disc golf for you. And for me, it, it was a year and a half of planning mm-hmm. and setbacks and recovery. And then a big and then, on. And then it was a week and a half of making arrangements and people coming into town, me making sure they were squared away, me answering constant text messages, emails, comments, constant, tags, constant. constant. I had to wear a brace on my left hand. This for is an not entire a joke, day really because did. I was texting so much that I had like this crazy carpal tunnel episode and I could not move my left thumb. I watched it. He tried. He didn't move it at all. And so I was having to text with only one thumb and, and it hurt to like even just hold the steering wheel without articulating my thumb. It, it, like it was painful for like a day and a half. And, 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 and it sounds so, funny, but that is not. It even sounds a joke. ridiculous. Like, but that's constant text messaging and answering phone calls. It's constant. Like, it came to a point where you, we were standing around. He was like, "Hey, come volunteer," and we'll just all stand around in a circle. No, that was phones. what it was. Like, hey, what does it take to be a staff member of the Music City Open? And well, me and about fifteen of my friends are going to stand in a circle and text each other. <laughs> yeah, because we can't do anything else or get any work done because we're constantly having to answer yeah. our phone. We had to when we were doing circles. Coop made me and Hoy put our phones down to finish them because he was like, dude, we can't get it done if you keep picking up your phone. Yeah. Like, it just, it's constantly going on. And I, I'm the assistant, Hoy, he had a lot more than just a course TD duty. But, and so for well, us, I was to get constantly that much, pushing people then, towards you and Dr. Well, Hoy. Yeah. Then that's the way we, we, we run it. But yeah. at the same time, when it's, it's constant, 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 it's hard for us to do simple things like, you know, pick up a, pick up some stakes and hammer them on the ground or something because we got to pick up our phone every two seconds. Yeah. Well, and then also that heightened level of tension influences and, and kind of misdirects your interactions with people mm. because like people are coming into town that are excited to see you and they catch you at a time when you're being pulled in 15 different directions. Like for me, it was like, you know, the Arzolas or, it's, you know, I'm one, of my, one of the, go. somebody that I really care deeply about comes up and is excited to see me and wants to take a picture. And I'm like, and I'm so distracted that even if I don't say something that I don't mean to, I feel bad. I feel guilty just for being distracted. And they can take the wrong perception thing and you blew them off. Right. Yeah. Well, and I don't want that to be, you know, because I care deeply about everybody that plays in our events and like, and I want everybody that, that it's here to have the best experience possible. Well, you hark on it, and that was kind of my point, was it comes down to there's some certain responsibilities you need to take as a competitor. 
and that's read the information that's provided because then you don't make phone calls that yes we're going to answer but that take us away from yeah, other so things much of it was stuff that was released better. in the digital caddy book you mm-hmm. know what i mean like so much of it was is there any coverage winter tea times blah 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 and it's like man i mean we're, we're working as fast as we yeah. can we didn't just up and forget that we're in the middle of, a, of the biggest tournament in tennessee history like we, oh, yeah because you didn't remember the, yeah because it that. was it was the biggest tournament in tennessee history yeah. you guys not to mention we had started building a temporary course for this tournament a year ago and halfway through right after our first test event everything's done let's change our plan because of covid like that's a pretty big wrench when you're already building a temp course yeah and we got really fortunate being a later event so all that to say guys like when we have to give you bad news and enforce rules and all that it's not because we're trying to make you have a bad day we want everybody that signs up for this event to be here and to have an awesome experience and make epic memories. We want that more than anything, but we will enforce the rules to a fault to on the same level consistently for everybody. doesn't matter if you're an am or a pro, it will always be that way. And if you want to take the time to ask us questions about stuff that doesn't add up to you, we're available, but like really, I mean, it. We're all here to have a good time to play disc golf, and this event is. I mean, it was huge. I feel like, I don't know. It's it's weird to talk about it in in terms of like, because it still feels like it was a loss, even though it was the biggest one ever. You know what I mean? Like there there were so many other things that we wanted to do with it. Well, it, was this it, was this what we wanted well, like was, from the MCO this year? No. No, absolutely not. Well, like we, we had planned for something much better. <laughs> right as we came on, it was like it didn't f- it didn't have the full MCO feel, but it ran and was very very successful and did so well. And we didn't have It held to our standard. Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, the tournament did to our standard as an event, I feel like because we couldn't right. do things. Yeah, yeah. Certainly. Yeah. But going that's just kind of the am side of the whole thing when it comes to it. There's a little bit of pro talk in there, but there's a whole another flip side to tournaments like this. And Will, you mentioned it talking about being a, a good person, no matter who you are or what's going on. I mean, that attitude or that amount of whatever it is that makes you not read the information and want to call and be catered to taking that attitude on the course. Yeah. I think you know where I'm going here also breeds issues yeah and, and you're, you're not gonna make friends yeah and <laughs> we dealt with some issues with with the you know the professionals of our sport yeah acting in a in a way that was not as a good person should act in my opinion yeah and i mean like i i, I do extend myself and do favors for the touring pros when they come to town and i do everything i can and go out of my way and bend over backwards to create opportunities for them to make money, especially when we have to eliminate the bells and whistles that we normally have that automatically create that opportunity for them. Like I do overextend myself and it's like, we got to be fair. That sense of entitlement. I mean, I I get it. Like you're, you're out there. Just got famous. And, and, and I, and I don't want to blame it on the, on the players. I don't want to blame it on the pros. It's not because I definitely feel like the more likely scenario is that there are tournament directors out there that are playing favorites and are setting precedents by giving certain people preferential treatment. And sure. There are that's that, that shouldn't be man. I mean, like it, that's not the way it should be. Uh, no, like we, it shouldn't be, but there are TDs out there, and I—I I mean, I don't know one personally, but we've had the phone calls, you know, from certain people. But like, there are TDs out there who are willing to pay the big name pros to come to their events. Yeah, and like we—we we run a club who puts on events. We can't do that. That's not. It's not like that's our personal money or something. No, because any money that we do manage to make, and we have historically. Not barely rode with <laughs> written the bottom line on MCO. I mean, like all the money that we do bring in for the club that goes back into our courses. Yeah. 
That goes back into course improvements at our local courses and development of new ones. Basket replacements, tee pad replacements, signage replacements, development of new courses. You know what I mean? That's that's where that money goes. But with the club. And charitable donations because absolutely. we partnered with Tennessee School for the Blind this year. So, so yes, we are obligated to that. But with that club like this and that, you get a better experience at those tournaments because yeah. you have a bigger backing. So it's you know it's always like a scale. You always have well, and it's it. all about the eyes that are going to be on it. I mean, like we were severely limited this year, like, and that's why we lost a lot of the sponsorship because we did have meetings. We had a meeting with Budweiser, mm-hmm. and that's still on the table for next year because Absolutely. when you're talking about an NT finale, there's a lot more eyes on it, especially if we can allow spectators. But did it? Go ahead. No, I mean that's that's the plan. So it's oh, like, but but Budweiser is less likely to pony up added cash money if there's no eyes on it. You know what I mean? And everything's speculative. And, like, the meeting we had was to kind of brand our sport with a certain line of Budweiser. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. They apparently had been talking about it in the the upper ranks up there in the old Budweiser worlds. But those things. That's where we're at. Yeah. God damn it. I had a wonderful point and I lost it again. Motherfucker. It's going to be okay. Sorry. I saw you floundering for a second. I saved no, you. No, I knew I was going south after I said that because that was the point I was tying into it. But anyway, I guys. Can't I can't remember now. Anyway, yeah. I mean. It was gold, too. Jay. It was a tribute to what I was going to say. Uh, but anyway. I love you, buddy. Be a good human. Be a, be excellent to one another. And as a disc golfer, I feel like most of us are the better humans of the world. So act like it. Yeah, do you, Set an example for these new guys getting into our sport. I mean, ultimately, that's what it comes down to is mutual respect, courtesy, like be good to each other. We're part of a family. And if you face adversity, rise above it. Absolutely. Regardless of that adversity. Yep. When where it comes from. That was like I feel like if I feel like we're winding down, but I feel like that was like such a small summary of the MCO, and we could keep going. Uh, oh, for dude, hours, it, yeah, we're already. I'm sure we're major, majorly in. Yeah, we're we're pushing two hours. So, do me and you in a room, and we can go for days. I mean, there there was a lot of lessons learned, and this is also I would love to remind everybody, this is all a part of the plan. This is all a part of the plan of the overall and ultimate growth of the music city open and there is going to be some awesome information coming out regarding the 2021 mco here in the next few months mm-hmm. and uh you know we're always working on something as it, as some somebody i know likes to say and regardless of covid we've had a year of dealing with covid so we'll be a lot better prepared and so will the government officials that allow and we've been highly successful with our our handling of it uh, d- yeah we do have a, an infectious disease specialist on staff, so that that helps. It helps. We get, I mean, we get some rubber gloves every now and again. Yeah, thanks. Thanks we got for that. Plenty of no contact thermometers and masks, and I still love the food one, so I can like, yeah, shoot you across the room with it. Pew. Guys, we love you, and this is why we do it. Hope you enjoyed it. Old school. Yeah, man. Just me and you. I wonder how long it'll be before we get kind of weird this again. It is weird. It felt nice. It felt right. It felt natural. Mm-hmm. You happen. make me feel. If I'm singing, we gotta go. Like a natural podcaster. I believe somebody got that on the tea time too. Take your music. <laughs> nice. All right, everybody. Until next time. Peace, guys. Be good to each other. Don't be jerks. The only unwritten golden rule of disc golf: don't. Be an asshole. Will, let's go. Come on. Bye. Let the bass kick.